Today we want to review the sales AR or account receivable processing in SAP Business One. This presentation will not cover the CRM and sales opportunities, that's covered in a separate presentation. The focus of this presentation today is more around the sales and invoicing process. So most uh, businesses have customers and we want to invoice those customers. And what we'll have a look at today is how we might do sales orders, invoicing, credit notes, and the various processes around sales and accounts receivable. I'm going to start by going to my menu, opening up Sales AR. What I can see in front of us is blanket agreements, sales quotations, orders, deliveries, AR invoice. In SAP Business One, I can either start with a blanket agreement or a quotation. A quotation can become an order, an order can become a delivery, and onto an AR invoice. Or I can just jump in and do, for example, an AR invoice, and it could be item or sale or service based. So the great thing in SAP Business One is that we're giving you choice. You have a choice of either following the various steps of quotation to order, order to delivery, delivery to invoice, or just jumping in and, for example, doing an order or a delivery. The sales agreement, blanket agreements, let's just have a quick look at that functionality. In SAP Business One, I can set up a situation where I might have a customer who's going to call off a specific number of items over, for example, a year or six months. And I'm going to schedule that call off of those orders. This can be automated inside the sales blanket agreements inside SAP Business One and linked into our recurring transactions, allowing me then to generate, for example, a delivery or a sales order or invoice every month for the delivery which is scheduled of those particular items. Let's go in there and let's have a look at a sales quotation in SAP Business One. As I click on the sales quotation form, I can now select my customer. I can either do a wildcard search for the customer, I could start typing in the customer name, or I could simply tab on the field and pick the customer that I want. It's defaulted to today's date, and it's given me a valid to, I'm going to make the quote valid to the end of this month. There might be a customer reference, so I'm going to put that in here. Smith Street Project is the reference. In this instance, I'm going to do an item type sales quotation and the customer is looking for 100 JB Office Print 1420s. It's defaulted the price. The price can be defaulted from the customer price list or from various price list rules that you set inside the system. Of course, if I have the rights to, I can override that or I could add, for example, a discount, again, providing I have the authorizations to do so. I can see that the tax code for Australia S1 has defaulted. Now what I can do is perhaps I'll put some text in here. Please note, three year warranty included. Now I can simply add that quotation into the system. Let's just go back and have a look at a couple of the other fields which are available to me on that sales quotation. First of all, I've enabled fields here which are open quantity in stock and committed, allowing me as the salesperson when I'm doing this quotation to see what my open quantity is. I've also got the discount field, for example, and serial number field in case I might be able to enter those. I can also right click and get additional fields and information. So I've got access to the gross profit potentially on that particular order or line item, the volume and weight calculations, or I can put activities or notes against that particular quotation. Again, not all functionality needs to be available to every user. In this instance, for demonstration purposes, I'm the administration user, so I've got rights to order that functionality. Again, another point to note on that is I can see multiple different columns here, serial number, discount percentage, delivery date, etc. First of all, I can change the field names, I can add columns in, and I can take some columns out by simply clicking on my form settings. So if I go to my form settings and I no longer want to see serial number, I can simply go in, 
untick the word serial number and it has now disappeared from the form structure inside that sales quotation. So what SAP is doing is making it really simple for the user or the administrator to set up, expand the forms, simplify the forms based on your company's specific requirements. So let's get back to the sales quotation. We've now got the sales quotation in front of us and the customer has decided to proceed. We're now going to take it to a sales order or potentially a delivery. By doing this, all we have to do is click on the copy to button and the system says in SAP Business One, do I want to take this to a sales order, a delivery, an AR invoice? I'm going to take it to a sales order for demonstration purposes. In fact, they're not going to order 100, they've decided to order 110. I'm just going to change that. Oh, I haven't put in the delivery date. So what I need to do now is go in and let's put in the delivery date for next week, Thursday. Add that in. Now I've got the sales order in the system. As that sales order then comes time to be delivered, I'd go into the system and do a delivery in the system. And then potentially if I want to follow all of the steps, that delivery could be converted into an AR invoice. So I've gone through the steps very quickly in terms of creating a quotation, moving that quotation through to a sales order, a delivery and an invoice. In most organizations that would happen over several days as the items are picked in the warehouse, delivery notes are sent out with the items, invoice perhaps sent uh, with the items or later that day for example. But for demonstration purposes I simply followed the steps. Let's now go back into that AR invoice and one of the great functions and features of SAP Business One, I can right click and again, I get access to more information. So let's have a look at the relationship map. Now what it shows me is that particular sales quotation was converted to that sales order, to that delivery, and that AR invoice. Of course, the sales order may have been converted to two different deliveries and onto a sales invoice, or two different AR invoices. And when I want to drill down from here to, for example, that AR invoice, I simply double click and I go down to the invoice in question. So again, nice, quick, easy access to information. Other things to note on this AR invoice, right click. I can look at the base document that the AR invoice came from. Again, if I've got permissions to, I could see the gross profit and weight uh, and volume calculations. I can look at the journal entry that was created as part of this transaction to see what the financial movements were sitting behind this particular transaction. I could, of course, drill down from here to the actual customer in question and look at their customer history. Or if I want to give Bob a call to make sure that he's received this invoice, I could drill down and I could go to Bob's actual details by just drilling down on the arrow. So again, quick, easy access to the information that I might want. Of course, I could also from here directly email the invoice to Bob. And let's not forget that using Crystal Reports, SAP Crystal, I can have the layout that I want in terms of that AR invoice with logos and portrait landscape, etc., inside the system. Now, what we looked at there when we did, for example, the uh, quotation order delivery was an item based uh, document, but of course, I can also do a service based document. So let's just have a look at that. We'll go into a sales order and down here, item service type. Instead of item, I'm going to click on service. And now I could say service for installation of server times two. I pick up my GL account that this is for. So it's for my sales revenue product one GL account. And it was for $1,200. So again, now nice and simply, I've created a sales order, but this time not for an item, but for a service. Okay, other things to note inside the sales AR side of SAP Business One, I can also do um, reserve invoices, for example. Um, I can do credit notes, obviously, against a particular invoice if I need to. I can take an AR invoice and payment in one simple step if someone's coming into my office and I want to do a quick invoice and payment in that uh, particular 
quick uh, order processing type scenario. I can also do recur recurring transactions. So for example here I've got two daily recurring transactions but I might have for example, a customer who's paying me monthly and I need a monthly AR invoice sent to them, I can set that up as a recurring transaction in SAP Business One and then the system will come and ask me, today is the day to send out this particular recurring transaction. Yep, please, I'll send that out. Uh, put the document through and it will be sent out. And those recurring transactions would be based on some templates, which might then, for example, be of an AR invoice or a delivery or a uh, for example, a sales order. So again, automating our processes inside SAP Business One. Reporting, obviously a number of standard reports like open item lists in SAP Business One. So let me look at all of my, for example, open AR invoices or my open sales quotations, my open sales orders. Nice, quick, easy access to information with, of course, drill down to the source transaction. Quick and easy to get where I want to be. Document draft reports, so I can create a document draft, and if I'm halfway through and I'm leaving the office for the day, I can save it as a draft and come back and look at that document another day. I can do a sales analysis. I can do it by customers or by items, or by items and by customers, and I can group those reports. I can obviously have my own reports in here, so for example, I might have my own Crystal SAP Crystal reports embedded into my reporting for my monthly customer status uh, you know, a nice graphical report, for example. So I might say, you know, I want a nice graphical report by posting date from that date to today's date. What customers do you want included, etc. And I can have some nice graphical reporting inside SAP Business One. So just to recap what we've seen, we looked at the fact that you can have blanket agreements in SAP Business One for your customers, calling off orders over time. You can follow the steps of quotation, sales order, delivery, and AR invoice, or you can simply jump in and do an AR invoice or a delivery. You don't have to follow the various steps. I can do item type invoices and orders and service type. I can do obviously things like credit notes. I can do reserve invoices. I can do recurring transactions and recurring transaction templates. Uh, I can do down payment invoices, for example. Another nice feature of SAP Business One, the Dunning Wizard, is the ability to send reminder letters, for example, to customers who may owe us money and are beyond our payment terms or trading terms. We looked also very briefly at the sales reporting in SAP Business One, lots of standard reporting, and of course the ability to embed our own crystal reports uh, from SAP into the main menu structure. So hopefully what we've seen there in that presentation is the end-to-end -end overview of the sales and accounts receivable process in SAP Business One. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please don't forget that there is uh, lots of additional information available on our website at leveragetech.com.au. Thanks for watching.